Thank you, Vance. You know, I've been called a lot of things in my lifetime, but never quite the summer of peace. So that's a new one on me. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living's Love Stream. You made the choice to be here this morning on Facebook Live, and I welcome you to my heart and to the heart of our spiritual family. In two days, June will come to an end. The year 2020 will be halfway through. Now, six months ago, we entered this new year with a sense of joyful anticipation. We even dubbed it 2020 Year of Plenty. Things never quite unfolded as we planned, now did they? The COVID-19 pandemic happened and it affected people in almost every single country of the world. It turned our lives upside down, even as we were faced with sudden and unprecedented change in our social and economic way of being. Some people lost their jobs, businesses closed, travel was curtailed, and work from home was implemented in many organizations. We were required to stay at home if we were of a certain age, and subjected to temperature checks, sanitization, and mask wearing when we left our homes. Some people went about their business as usual, seemingly oblivious to what was going on while others were mired in anxiety and fear about the possibility of catching this deadly disease. In the middle of trying to cope with all of this, at the end of May, the United States erupted in demonstrations over the death of African-American George Floyd by the police. I could just hear my grandmother's response, if it ain't one thing, it's another. Soon, Countries in other parts of the world came out in solidarity to join their hearts and voices in the cry that black lives matter. People expressed their anger and fear about what it meant to be black in America. My Jamaican female friends living in the US shared their fears for their sons, their husbands, and other black males in their families. Between the pandemic and the Black Lives Matter protests, to me, the energy of fear and anger was palpable. I felt it right here in my stomach. And I had my own challenges, having to breathe deeply and not ease up on my prayer work. So my boat would ride the waves without being capsized in the turbulence of news reports, public commentary, and WhatsApp messages. As students of the science of mind, we learn that there is one presence and one power that we know as God. That this presence is love and that we are one with it. We learn that it exists in and expresses through and as each and every one of us. And that no matter what the appearance, God is in there somewhere. In my own experience, I had to shift my thinking big time so I could see God in the midst of all that was going on, especially when the chatterbox voices of doubt and fear and anxiety inside my head threatened to undermine my very existence. At those times, I had to declare very loudly, peace, be still. Saying these words had a most calming effect and so, in my encouragement this morning, entitled, Letting Peace Begin With Me, I'm inviting you to embrace them like I did, so that you too can be conduits for deep, abiding, life-giving peace. According to Internet Encyclopedia, Wikipedia, peace is a concept of societal friendship and harmony in the absence of hostility and violence. In a social sense, peace is commonly used to mean a lack of conflict, such as war, and freedom from fear of violence between individuals and groups. However, it is the second part of this definition that stood out for me and which will enable us to deliberately and intentionally be proactive peacemakers at an individual 
and collective level. The rest of the statement is this, and I quote, some have expressed the belief that peace can be initiated with a certain quality of inner tranquility that does not depend on the uncertainties of daily life for its existence. The acquisition of such a peaceful internal disposition for oneself and others can contribute to resolving of otherwise seemingly irreconcilable completing sorry, competing interests, end of that quote. Hmm. A certain quality of inner tranquility that does not depend upon uncertainties of daily life. Wow, hmm. So here's a little story that illustrates this idea. There once was a king who offered a prize to the artist who would paint the best painting depicting peace. Many great painters sent the king their best art pieces. One of the finalists painted a calm lake perfectly mirroring peacefully towering snow-capped mountains, a clear blue sky with fluffy clouds. It seemed to be the best amongst them all. But then the king announced the winner and everyone was shocked. The painting which won also had mountains but they were rugged and bare. The sky looked angry with streaks of lightning. That did not look very peaceful at all. However, as the people took the time to look closely at the painting, they could see a tiny bush growing between the cracks in the rock. In that bush, a mother bird had built her nest, and there she sat, in the midst of the rush of angry weather, guarding her nest with peace. Friends, being at peace does not mean to be in a place where there is no noise or trouble. It means to be in the midst of all the chaos and still be calm in your heart. You have that certain quality of inner tranquility that is not affected by the stuff that is swirling around you. Real peace has to do with state of mind, not the state of your surroundings. In the painting, the mother bird was calm, despite her chaotic environment. Science of Mind founder Dr. Ernest Holmes reiterates this idea when he describes peace as a state of inner calm, so complete that nothing can disturb it. End of that quote. Life is consciousness, and if we want to affect real change in our lives, the realm of mind we call consciousness must first change. We must affirm and know that the peace we are craving exists, and we are the ones responsible for making that peace happen. So when we sing together, yes, there is peace on earth, and yes, it begins with me, it means firstly, beginning with the reflection in the mirror and generating peace within ourselves, because our work is not to make the world right, but to see it right. Think about the last time you felt upset with someone or about something. Go back in time and imagine that the situation is occurring right now. Ask yourself, why is it that I'm feeling what I'm feeling? What is making me react this way? Am I reacting at the level of the condition or behavior? Am I coming from regret triggered by the past? Or am I feeling anxiety about the future? The answers to these questions should give you a sense of whether your living is coming from a space of inner tranquility or being pushed and pulled by the uncertainties of daily life. If your responses have, been, have had you thinking that life's roller coaster is having its way with you, then I invite you to consider the following ideas. Firstly, I invite you to remind yourself that you are made of God's stuff, equal to and in the image of that which is perfect, whole, and complete. Say to yourself, I am created as peace, and I let peace nurture 
every experience. Declare, Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace and a channel for the awareness of life to flow through me. Ask yourself, what principle do I stand on, no matter what circumstances might come my way? Am I grounded in faith or am I falling in fear? Trust and know that life is unfolding perfectly. Acknowledge where you are right now, right here, that everything is what it is. This is the first step to living with a sense of peace. And now, just because we say that things are unfolding perfectly, it doesn't mean that we should sit idly by just declaring all is well. We know that all is well. But we need to ask ourselves, what new choices can I make that will enable me to act and react from a space of peace? Think about when you're about to enter a conversation. If that conversation could be maybe a bit challenging, get still and affirm Psalm 19 verse 14. And I quote, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. End of that verse. Ensure that your communication is clear and comes from a space of love, wisdom, integrity, and authenticity. These qualities keep us grounded in peace. Next, I invite you to learn to meditate or deepen your meditation practice. This is a surefire way to still your mind and put pause to the monkey mind and the chatter that goes on in our mind from time to time. And the last thing, do not allow yourself to be swayed by news or opinion. The following story explains this perfectly. There once was a monk who lived at the edge of a town. Whenever he ventured into the town, the people would give him gifts and call out to him, Oh teacher, you do such good. Your presence is such a blessing. To all of this, the monk replied, Is that so? Well, one day a young woman came to the monk's hut and said, Oh teacher, I'm in terrible trouble. I am pregnant and my family has disowned me. I have nowhere to go. Well, she, she shared with him that the young man who she loved so much had fled to another town because her family would certainly do him harm. She said, I have nowhere to turn and no one else to ask for help. Well, the monk opened his heart and told her that she could live in the back room and help around the house, affording her the security of a home for herself and her child. After the townspeople got wind of a pregnant young girl living with the monk, they scorned him when next he went into town. You dirty old man, you have taken advantage of that young woman. How shameful! And they hurled insults and rotten fruits at him. To all of this, the monk would always reply, is that so? After a while, the father of the child returned to the town and presented himself before the family, saying, I have spent the last two years learning a trade and now I am able to provide a home for your daughter and grandchild. The family was overjoyed. Although it wasn't the best of solutions, it enabled them to welcome their daughter and grandchild back into the family with open arms. Well, after that, things were so different when the mom next went into town. The townspeople lined the road, presenting him with gifts and calling out, Oh, teacher, how could we ever have doubted you? Look at the wonderful thing you have done. We are so ashamed. Please forgive us. You are such a wise and com compassionate person. To all of this, the monk would reply, 
Is that so? What a wonderful lesson this story teaches us. It speaks to the calmness and detachment of the monk in the midst of both praise and condemnation, holding himself apart from what people were thinking, even as he acted with love, compassion, and a sense of responsibility. So as each of us walk this life path, others will misread our intentions and jump to conclusions that cast us in a bad light. So in the hustle of everyday life, we must learn to maintain emotional detachment from the transient opinions of others and not be pulled off center by shallow praise any more by, than by empty criticism. Thus keeping our feet on the path of a calm heart and an untroubled mind. Friends, I believe that the peace that we are seeking is already here. Peace will prevail on earth when each of us begins to take conscious ownership of being the peace that we want to see. So as I close, I invite you to just close your eyes a little bit and contemplate the words of this meditation inspired by Ernest Holmes. Be still and know that I am God. Within me is the principle of peace. My mind is poised in peace and beauty. It has no worries. It has no fears. So I rest in calm trust and rely on the law of spirit to bring good into my experience. I contend with none, argue with none, and I'm filled with wonderful peace and light. There is no uncertainty about my future and no regret as a result of my past. I live in the eternal now, which is filled with good and good and good. Goodness and beauty follow me. Gentle peace and joy accompany me. This is my reality. It is gratefully so. And so it is. Namaste.